Sunglasses, no sunglasses? I'm gonna take mine off, but that's only because I'm the star of the show. <laughs> All right, okay. I'll get serious. Today, I get to be home in Texas and I get to hang out with longtime friend Clay Regan, who we go quite a ways back to the beginnings of our use of public safety drones in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So, Clay, tell me where you're at right now as far as work and drones and public safety, and then give me a quick idea of, of where you started out. Right now, I'm uh, retired uh, from military and police 33 years and Currently, I am the UAS coordinator for Ellis County Sheriff's Department in Texas. I've been there about two years. Right after I retired, they got me and I wanted to start a program and pretty happy to be there. Outstanding. And where did you start out, uh, you know, your, your law enforcement career? And then, of course, you have a military career. So tell me a little bit about that and your evolution into drones and, and your progression there. Started out basically in the Marine Corps for a year, went to the Air Force as a bomb dog handler for a year. Started my law enforcement career in Bedford, Texas in 1990 and retired in 18. In 2015, I learned that there was this thing uh, called a drone and it was a small quadcopter and some people were doing some things in it and heard about these, this group called PCERT and this guy down in uh, Mansfield, Texas. And he had a chief friend that was uh, down the road as well and just kind of started from there. We were just talking the other day, we went from responding all over the DFW area with drones to where now PCERT is really, you know, way back in, in reserve, which is great. That's where we wanted to end up being and where we ended up. So yep, we've we put ourselves out of business because we, we did a good job. And yeah. it was, uh, that, that's, a, that's a good thing. And during all that, you've been able to travel around the, the, the world uh, and, and help uh, UAS. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I've been able to uh, train around the country in the United States. I had an opportunity to assist uh, in, in Brazil and in Guatemala with conservation. That's kind of something that's important to me as well. And, and bring the capabilities we learned in law enforcement, and public safety into uh, other career fields and specifically to keep conservation people safe and make them do their job more efficiently. Outstanding. And so I'm going to ask now because you're here uh, right now with Reveille Peak being behind us, mm -hmm. what really got you thinking, hey, you know, drones would be valuable in law enforcement? Basically for the the uh, safety aspect of it, number one, it's an inexpensive uh, option for uh, equipment. Obviously, it saves lives when we can put a piece of machinery in that if it gets damaged, uh, we can replace it uh, pretty quick, pretty easy, even if it costs a little bit, but it's not, it's, it's saving lives of the people, it's saving lives of the first responders, and even the people that were out there trying to uh, apprehend, it makes it safe, safer and easier for them as well. What have been some of the successes you've seen through the years from that? I mean, you've, you've been fortunate to be a part of different agencies and see drones even in the military space. What, what some of the successes you've seen from them? Mostly just the saving of lives. Lots and lots of uh, people being saved, old people uh, that, that wandered off, children, officers being injured and not being able to find them. And just the, having the, the, the ability for suspects to be able to see that they're being watched and what they're going, what's going on with them and they're, they're not gonna get away. And I've, we've had people uh, actually give up to drones and UASs and have them just follow us out to the, uh, a safe environment where we control the situation, where we have the advantage and they're less likely to uh, want to cause issues because everything's being watched. Right, and that's something I talk about a lot and have uh, seen a lot of over the years. You know, the de-escalation that drones have brought to where it's not just saving the lives of police officers and the public, but even the actors, the, the bad actors that, like Arlington PD has got a lot of work where they have gotten suspects to get into areas where they start to feel comfortable, their adrenaline and their fight or flight starts to reduce, so now they're less likely to make poor decision. Now an officer can, can come in and handle the situation without the use of force in a lot of cases, which is good for the officer and that uh, bad actor. What's some of the great things you've seen drone technology evolve to, or what technology has come along? What, what kind of have been your, wow, that's great moments throughout? Just to see the evolution of every, every design of something new is an enhancement, obviously, and does better. Thermal imagery is a fantastic addition that we didn't have earlier in the early days, and if it did, it was very rudimentary. The ability to drop uh, payloads, 
the ability to track our movement where we're at on, on scene. And a big game changer also was the uh, being able to send video anywhere to anybody, anytime, as long as they had connectivity. And then now the biggest thing that we're getting to as well is the interior option. And that, that's just phenomenal. I think that's, it's hard to pick a number one, but uh, man, the, the interior flight, that gave us an option that, that we didn't have previous. And we just saw that with uh, you demonstrating the Avada at the Reveille Peaks bus simulator where you're able to fly in. And again, going back to the great thing about the Avada, not sending officers in, not sending a SWAT team in. Now we can send that robot in, reducing the danger level down. And tell me about that experience as you've seen throughout uh, this time. When we started, it was just, just getting eyes in and be able to stream the video back and having uh, information. Then we developed tactics on being able to clear rooms with one and two and then multiple drones as well. Being able to have a uh, long cover down a hall and also clearing rooms back and forth. And then something we, we learned that we didn't really know when we started was the ability for the uh, UAS, uh, Avada, whatever we might have, to make a, uh, uh, to, to have noise, have white noise going down the hall that also covers uh, our team movements. It's also a very good surprise. If we need to make uh, entry into a room, obviously we can throw, um, throw the drone into the room, take it to the far side, it gives that situational awareness that it makes the, the bad guy blink just a second, and then we're able to make contact with them and overwhelm them and have them give up. Where do you see the future of drones in law enforcement? I think onboard computing is very important. I think miniaturization and be able to make things uh, look good and, and function in high winds like this. I mean, the winds, the winds going along pretty good today. You can probably see the hats. But I, I think there'll be a time where every patrol officer, every time he leaves the vehicle, will have his or her own personal UAS that's assigned to them, just like the vehicle cam, just like the body cam that's on the on the belt or the chest or on the body armor. This UAS is gonna take off and provide telemetry. I've been in backyards, in another backyard, in another backyard, and have no idea I am other than three or four blocks over from where I started. And I would love to have somebody that could see me, know I'm okay, not have to climb the next fence to figure out where I'm at for sure. And, uh, and, and know, get, get help from me when I need it. So that's great too, being able to, if you do need help, guide them into where you're at. Mm -hmm. but, but you also make a good point I talk about with the use of drones is drones can be a very effective objective witness. They, they get a better field of view. They take in more of the scene than a body camera can be. You know, body cam can get obstructed if an officer has to raise his weapon or in, in, a, in a, you know, I hope it never happens with them, but a fight and they're on a ground fight. You're not getting any view if, if anything is done wrong by the officer or the, the suspect. That objective witness right there with the officer, I know people start to think privacy concerns and, and you know, I, again, it's justifiable, but I think they're getting just as much protection if there's an officer that makes a mistake as well as protecting the, the officer's lives, like we talked Absolutely. I don't have a problem with letting things be how they are, but I want an, an, an honest shot at being able to portray what actually happened. I've, I've been on the ground several times wrestling, and it's just body on body cam, and it's jumbling, and it's, you know, it's just movement. And if, if I had to do something like that, and I had to use force, how would I explain? There's no body body cam. I'm off the side of the of the police vehicle, so there's no. It's my word against their word. And if there was an aerial shot of that, it would be it would be a great thing. Well, that's outstanding. So, well, thank you so much. Always great to see you, yes, sir. Absolutely. And, uh, thank you again for being on here. And absolutely. Thank you.